morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching from. Um, today, I've finally got four or five hours um, of spare time to be able to do a video I've been meaning to do um, since I started this channel. Now, it's a kayak video, um, but it's going to be based at beginners who want to get into the sport or people maybe who've just started and want to know a little bit about everything. Um, so it's going to be a, hopefully about an hour's long video. We're going to go through absolutely everything in regards to kayak fishing at sea or, or if you're going on a lake you, you can also imply the practices I'm going to show you. First thing I would like to say is I'm quite new to this as well um, but I am quite an obsessive person so I do watch hundreds of videos, thousands of articles all about um, kayak fishing and things um, and I've been out a lot of times now and I have kind of feel very confident in what I do, um, how I set myself up and I feel like I'm in that position now where I can do this video um, and, and offer good safety advice and also good fishing advice as well. Um, I couldn't find a video on YouTube um, when I started um, which had absolutely everything um, about kayak fishing, starting up kayak fishing. Um, there were a lot of ones which would, would do individual parts and it was a bit annoying chopping and changing because you'd find someone which you really liked, you know, a really good YouTuber which you really liked and you had a connection with, but they may only have done one video about anchoring but then they, they didn't talk about anything else and, you know, for this one, hopefully, if you like me as a YouTuber, um, you're going to be in for a treat because I'm going to really go through absolutely everything. Um, so what we're going to go through is we're going to talk about kayaks, um, paddling, or pedaling. We're going to talk about the length of kayak, the brands, the different types of kayaks. Um, we're going to sort of do it in subheadings. I'm not going to sit here for the whole hour talking. We're going to go out and have a look at my kayaks. I've got two out there set up for you. Um, we're going to look at some of my gear um, and we're going to go through it like that. So the first thing we're going to talk about is kayaks. Um, and then once we've spoken about the types of kayaks, the lengths and all that sort of thing, um, we're then going to go on to safety gear. And I'm going to run you through all my safety gear uh, how, what I've got, what I don't have, what I need to get, um, and all, all that sort of stuff. We're going to go through, run through the whole safety gear. Um, and then after that, we're going to go through the anchoring setup and anchor reels, how to set an anchor, all that sort of bits and bobs. We won't be doing it at sea, we'll be doing it on my driveway, but it will give you a really good insight. There's lots of other videos out there for anchoring anyway, which do it at sea, so you'll, you'll find a few of those. Um, and then after that anchoring, we're going to talk about fish finders, um, and how we set those up, what they're about, are they worth it, all that kind of thing. And then after that, we will then go on to the rods and reels that I use, some of the end tackle. I'm not gonna go really into detail about lures and tackle, it's not very interesting um, in this video, but it's just gonna give you a rough insight. This, this video really is to give you an insight into everything. So after this, you, you should feel really um, enlightened about kayak fishing. Um, and then after rods and reels, I've got um, another bit about how to plan a trip, what to look out for, uh, wind-wise, weather-wise, what apps I use. I've made mistakes already where I've looked at apps, they've, the wind's looked really good and I've got there and it's like this, um, and we had to call it short. That's happened twice now, um, properly, and then a couple of the trips thrown in, the wind did pick up a bit, which I wasn't expected. You can't always plan it, but there's definitely some things now that I know, and I know now not to bother to go out, if that makes sense. So. Um, Anyway, we, let's get on with the video. Um, I really hope you enjoy this video. Subscribe, hit your alert button, comment. Any questions, throw them over. I'm always willing to ask, answer anything. Um, and yeah, I just hope you come out at the end feeling really enlightened about the whole kayak fishing sport um, here we have in England. So let's get on with it. Okay, so I've brought you outside now to my two kayaks. This is a Hobie Mirage Outback um, 2018. We're not going to go into any details about the kayaks or anything like that. Again, this is a rough overview. So that's the one I'm currently using. I've also got a random mate, don't really know, slightly shorter one, um, paddle version. Um, and we're just going to go through some of the pros and not so pros about different things. So this here is a pedal kayak. Um, I started off on the pedal, uh, the paddle one. And after the second trip, first trip, I, I went to one of these because I, I had a bit of money and um, I knew I was gonna get into the sport. So the first thing I wanted to do was get myself a, a really good kayak. Um, the reason why I've gone for, for pedal, um, the two, obviously these drop into there 
there are there's lots of there's a few different models and you, and you just pedal with your feet um the pros with a pedal kayak right so obviously your hands free with a pedal kayak so if you're doing a lot of lure fishing um and stuff like that um they are pretty good speed wise but you, you can probably be a bit faster but if you've got strong arms there's not too much difference um obviously you've got a rudder there on most on all uh, pedal kayaks there will be a rudder um, which makes it really easy for um, maneuverability and uh, to get quickly out to a mark i love having a pedal kayak because you get your hands so if you're lure fishing you've got two hands to do stuff you know you can be tying a rig while you're going out to a mark while pedaling um, and that's why I, I preferably i prefer a pedal kayak but in all fairness i've never tried um, a really sort of good high-end paddle kayak so this is a, this is a, this is my paddle kayak as you can see you get a little bit more room generally in the front here um this is a terrible thing no it's not terrible but it's a small thing it's a cheap thing so obviously there are much much better paddle kayaks out there i've got to get paddle and pedal right otherwise this could all end up being a bit embarrassing um you know you've got the viking reloads we've got a lovely big box here you can lift up put all your tackle in bait boards on top and oh i'm quite jealous of those so um they're really lovely um to have obviously you've got your your paddle there that you use so those those two so you've got paddle and pedal um what you want to be looking for if you're going kayaking at sea this is about 10 foot long you're not looking don't don't get something which is 10 foot you want something which is 12 foot or, or longer preferably longer you want really sort of 13 foot but because these are very very stable kayaks um 12 foot is absolutely fine so if you're going kayak fishing at sea you want something which is at least 12 foot so that's really really important um some are built slightly bit more for stability um this is quite a wide this is quite a wide kayak you can can get slightly wider ones but so this one's a bit of better best better bleh. best of both worlds really it's quite wide it's, it's nice and stable and it's also quite fast so you can get quite slimmer kayaks which, which go um much faster but when looking for a kayak you really want to be looking for either a something like an ocean prowler um, a big game viking reloads any of those sort of even though the, even a, a mocken 12 mocken 12.5 feel free ones they're, they're good kayaks they're good stable kayak um, but look for you know a good reputable brand something which you know is going to be good um, go second hand my is my opinion especially if it's your first time uh, if you go second hand you will not really lose much money on the resale and not only that you can get a big sort of big kits you know if i was to give up kayak fishing now you'd, you'd get so much kayak gear with with this and you'd be ready to go straight away if you buy just a kayak new you've got to remember you've got to add everything else to it so um that is why i personally would go on facebook marketplace ebay and look at kayak fishing deals um as a whole and try and try and get a big bulk of items so that's basically um kayaks covered really in in a, in a vague overview you've got your paddle a uh, paddle over there your pedal kayaks get one which is 12 foot plus get one uh, reliable good brand um so you know that it's a good kayak and it's well made um go second hand if you can um go on the forums and have a look at about them but for sea fishing that is something you need all right so the next thing we're going to talk about is safety gear which is the next priority on the list well, obviously it's the first priority but the first priority is, is getting your kayak because then all well, the safety gear is pointless so um we're going to go look at safety gear now okay so let's get into the safety um part of the video and safety equipment um the first thing you're going to want before anything else is a plb which is a personal um flotation device um now you can really spend as much or as little as you want on these obviously they're an absolute essential bit of kit um however as long as they're 50 newtons or more they fit you correctly they are going to keep you afloat um this one i think i paid 20 pounds for um it, it floats it works perfectly fine it hasn't got a load of pockets which is a, is a bit of a downside sometimes but it, in reality if you've got pockets you generally will fill them and then if you come out your kayak it's much harder to get back in with all your bits and bobs hanging off the side so um 
I do try and keep my sort of PLB minimalist. So you need a PLB, 50 newtons or more. Um, so that's that. You can spend up to 120, 150 pounds, but you can also spend 20 pounds and get you out. And that is safe. Right. Um, another thing, a safety bit of equipment which you can have is something called a PLB, which is a personal locator beacon. All these have a specific number on the back of them. You input that date onto uh, that data onto a Maritime and Coast Guard Agency's website um, and send it off. And that is you. That is that's your personal device. That is. So what you do is I'm not going to do it, but you you put your antennae up, which is here, um, and in an emergency you click one button and your GPS location is sent to the Coast Guard as an utmost emergency. And you'll get RNLI um, or Coast Guard come out and look for you um, ASAP. So great bit of kit because that doesn't enable you to need to talk or absolutely anything. It just enables you to click a button, which is quite crucial. Um, these will come with a battery life. Um, this one's until, it will always say it on the back there. Mine's battery expiry on that is, there you go, 10, 20, 24. So, I've got four years of that before I need to even look into it. Um, you can only use that once, once you use that once. I believe that it possibly gets replaced um, free of charge when you use it, but I'm, I might be, be lying there, but I've heard that a few times. So that's a PLB, That's that just sits on there on my life jacket in case I ever come out and I need someone to come and get me. The next crucial bit of kit is a VHF radio. This, may I add, is not a marine VHF radio, um, and it, I'm ashamed to say it's not even waterproof. I got this free in a pack. Um, these are vital, and I must get a marine one, but um, I've got that, and I've got something else as well, so I'm happy to just take this out at the moment in time. Um, radio, very, very simple. This one, you get all your channels. At the moment, I'm dual frequency and channel... 16 and channel 6 and channel 6 would be what I chatted on uh, with the guys and then channel 16 in case I've got to put an emergency call out um, you're going to get one of them you want something which is about 5 watts nice bit of power to it um, now preferably you want one with uh, DSC which is digital selective calling um, what that is fantastic for is let's pretend this isn't a DSC radio but let's pretend this is a marine VHF radio with DSC. Now, I'm falling out the water. I need to get someone to come to me ASAP. Um, DSC is going to be a little button on the side. Obviously, it's not this button. I'm just using this to a demonstration. You would click the button. That sends out a emergency signal. Um, it will send your boat's identity and your position um, and the nature of your distress, obviously, if you can talk, but it will send out your position um, on GPS to everyone which has DSC enabled. So all your fishing boats, the Coast Guard, any large scale boats, they will all hear that um, DSC broadcast and um, you're much more likely to get someone to come and help you quickly. There might be a fishing boat a mile away, which is, can get to you really quickly. And when it rows are and I might take 20, 25 minutes to get to you. So. I would get a DSC radio, that will be my next radio, I will be getting a DSC radio. Obviously if you've got DSC there's not so much need for that um, because obviously a DSC is similar to clicking that one button but you can also talk to people on the DSC and update them about uh, your position and what's happening. So VHF radio, absolutely crucial, very very simple bits of kit, people go into way too much detail on these. There are. Basically, 16, there's, there's a lot of channels. It goes up to about 70 channels, 75 channels, but you really only use channels 1 to 10 and, and 16, and that's that's the basic, really. So, VHF radio, we'll add that to our safety equipment. So, we've got our PLB, live track, it keeps us afloat when we fall in. Our PLB, if I need someone immediately and can't speak and all I've got is my hands, then that goes out, sends our exact location. And a VHF radio, we can chat to our mates, which makes the day more enjoyable. Um, we can also chat to the Coast Guard if we need to. Uh, be aware, BHF radios, you do need a license for marine ones. Um, I was just going on a course to do that. If you can, get a bunch of sort of five or six of you kayak fishing guys 
um, to go. It makes the day much more interesting and the day will be more tailored to you then and not sailing boats because I've heard of mixed reviews about those courses but obviously you get your certificate at the end of it and you also learn a bit in the process so VHF you need a certificate to use that. Um, another thing I take out to sea as a safety bit of gear that here is a waterproof phone case. Um, my phone is waterproof already however I get this as a sort of double protection and it will enable me as it's touch screen um, to use the phone out at sea in water. So obviously your phone goes in there it clips up and then what I've done on here at the moment uh, to film all my YouTube videos at sea, I use my phone. Um, that just clips into there. Um, that's so that's now clipped to my uh, to my to my PLB. Um, I can use my phone, and if I fall in, I've got that stays on board because it's not waterproof. If I fall in and I drift away from my kayak and I need someone ASAP, I clip that first. Ring 999, ask for Coast Guard on that second. So I've always got something as a backup. So even if that doesn't work, I've got my phone. And I've never not been without signal at sea, even a mile and a half out, I've still had full signal. So pretty, pretty good really. Um, don't have to have that, it's just an option, but I like to have my phone on me um, just to fiddle with as well at anchor if I'm a bit, fishing's a bit slow. Um, so yeah, that's something else to carry out. Another thing, not safety gear, but crucial, sunglasses these aren't the ones i take out they're just for the video um always take a pair of sunglasses out with you um the sea at, when you're at sea you've got the sun coming at you from all angles and uh if you're anchored up facing the the, the, the sun and you've not got a pair of those you, you're gonna get well it's not gonna be a very enjoyable experience you're gonna be squinting all day and you're either gonna so carry one of those just pop them in your bag or whatever um another thing i always take out paracetamols at sea you do tend to drink less i found this out the hard way i've had headaches a few times when i first go out what i do before every trip i take two of these that means no headaches for me um, and if i haven't drunk as much as i should then i will not get a headache it's no excuse but you know it's just what i do i carry two of those and that guarantees me a headache free day but you know even if you don't want to take two before the trip take them out anyway if you feel a bit sick and you or whatever you know you've got a bit of a pain then um they're fantastic what well, they've got 20p throw them in your box so i just put them in put them in my box and and there we go so that's um safety equipment for this um i'm just going to spin the camera around and we're going to talk about dry suits and wet suits very quickly so dry suits and wetsuits what's the difference well a dry suit if you fall in the water you are going to stay dry um, from your feet to your neck the only thing which is going to get water on it is your hands um, as they're not in the dry suit and if you go fully under obviously your head's going to get wet um, dry suit for me is is gonna is definitely the thing which is going to save your life if you go in you know between say the months november to may you know where the sea is cold it's you know in england the sea can go down to sort of eight degrees um inshore so if you fall in and you're mile out you, you've got a if you haven't got a dry suit you've got to paddle in and by that time you've got hypothermia and you know serious things are going to happen to you so invest in a dry suit the one thing about dry suits <laughs> which i wish i had done was get one with a P zip, which is something you can just zip there, put your winky out and do a whittle um, at sea, throw it over the side and it's all easy. I got my dry suit very early on in my kayaking life. Um, I bought it for my first trip. Um, I spent, I think it was about 330 quid. These things are not cheap. Um, and it just didn't have a P zip. I don't get me wrong, it's, I can, I can, I have worked it out now, but it does involve a bit of fiddling and it, it can be a bit messy so get one with a p-zip spend the 400 quid i know it's ridiculous you might have spent 500 pounds on your kayak setup and now you're spending 400 pounds on your dry suit i know it's mad safety equipment is the second most you know what scratch that it's the first most expensive part of kayak fishing your kayak is cheap really compared to all the safety gear once you've had it all on you know 400 pounds for a dry suit 
200 pounds for your DSC radio. You know, if you're gonna get a PLB, that's sort of another 140, 150 pounds. Um, and once you've added all your other bits in, you know, that's, you know, you're talking 700 pounds. So it's not a cheap hobby to get into, but if you're gonna do it safely, and if you're gonna go out there, you need to be doing it safely, um, invest in a dry suit. That will keep you warm and dry if you fall in the water. A wetsuit, people sometimes say, why don't I just wear a, a full wetsuit? Wetsuits allow water to touch your skin and then they trap the water. Um, and it, used, it, used, it used, then uses your body temperature to heat up that water as a layer um, to warm to, you know, to warm your body up, to keep you semi-warm. Um, no good for kayak fishing, um, but absolutely fine. Probably between the months, June till October, you could get away with wearing a wetsuit. Um, if you fall in then, the water can, can be up to sort of 18, 20 degrees, much warmer um, and much safer. Um, obviously, if you've got a dry suit in August, I, I wear mine, I always wear mine, I never w won't wear it, but if you wear a, a, a dry suit in August and it's at 30 centigrade outside, you know, you've also got sunstroke, um, it's, it's much hotter, it's harder to move around, you're sweating, so it's sometimes way up the risks, be sensible, sometimes maybe a wetsuit is going to be the safer option. But for overall fishing, dry suit, 100%. I haven't, I haven't got it out, it's upstairs in my bag, um, but get your dry suit, look after it, lubricate the zips, put some talcum powder on the latex socks if you've got those, that keeps them nice um, in, in good quality. Um, and yeah, that, that's that's what I would that's what I would say. So now that we've covered what kayak you want to be looking for, um, we've covered the safety equipment. We can now get on to the slightly more interesting bits and pieces. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about is anchoring, um, how you set up your trolley, uh, and and how you do all those sort of bits. So let's get on to stage three. Okay, so anchoring a kayak, one of the more dangerous parts of kayak fishing, but a crucial thing in a way um, if you want to sort of fish at anchor um, and fish with baits. Obviously, you can drift fish, but that's mainly for place. So, anchoring does make kayaking really, really good fun, actually. This is my favourite part of kayak fishing is when you're anchored up and you're having a really good day. So the one thing you're going to need is one anchor reel. This is a cheapo one, um, I think about 18 quid. Um, the other one, which is slightly better, is made by Beaver. Um, I would go for the more expensive one probably, but again, I got this in a sort of bit of kit that I got, um, hence why I just used the cheap one. All it is is a bit of string anyway on there. Um, you need an anchor reel. A couple of meters of chain, I would argue the chain is almost as, just as important as the anchor. So the more length of that, the better, but two meters is absolutely ample. And then you want a anchor. That's a one and a half kilo grappling anchor. Nice big anchor. I'll say one and a half kilos. I think that's the three kilo one, actually. Yeah, that's a three kilo. Um, normally there's a lock there, but that's, I've lost that one. Don't know where it is. Um, but it hasn't caused me any issues. Uh, with an anchor, I have to set that up. Then you just put your chain goes on to your lock at the bottom. That just screws on like that so that it can't slip off. Then you run your chain up to the top. Then what you do need to do is create what we call a weak link. Um, so when you're pulling your anchor in, obviously you're pulling it from the top. And if it ever gets stuck, the weak link will enable it to snap and then you'll be pulling the anchor up from that way. So obviously that will rise up there with, with the whole bit of chain and you'll be pulling it from the, the other end, which nine out of ten times will set it free. Very cheap way of doing it. You get your cable tie, you put it on and then you put a little nick in it. Like, I was going to say like so, but I probably, I don't think I have, no. I haven't put any nick in that. But you get a little knife, put a little nick in it uh, and then you can just pull it in there pull it free but if I pull that tight enough that will that will just snap but you can get a proper anchor clip um uh, they're quite hard to get hold of but there is a link on ebay you can go on there and it's an anchor it's a proper trip and you know exactly what pressure it snaps at and it, you get to keep it every time so obviously that's no good now really because you put putting plastic in the ocean it's in this day and age it's not what you want to be doing but you know at the moment that's what I've got so sorry everyone um 
so yeah, so you open your two meters of chain, you tie, I'll just use a grin knot there, tie that onto the end, and Bob's your uncle. So let's go and look at the anchor trolley and uh, look at how we how we anchor up. So this is we've come out to my um, Hobie Mirage outback to um, look at the anchor trolley. Now when someone says anchor trolley, what that is is this thing here, which goes on the side, and it enables you to shovel up something like that um, and I'll show you exactly how to use it in a minute with an anchor trolley when you do get the anchor trolley and you order it you need to be mounting this as far back as possible um, this one Hobie the manufacturer put on if I was doing this I'd have it about here but I'm not and I think the reason they've not put it back here is probably because they don't want to get caught with a rudder so that might be the reason it's there but if you've if you've not got a rudder then um, put it as far back as possible because it's going to keep you as stable and as straight in the tide as possible. So obviously it's just a pulley, really, really simple. So mount them at the back. And then what you also want to do is mount one again at the front. I probably would have put that there, but Hobie's put it there. So, um, so yeah, what an anchor trolley does is it enables you to move your anchor line to the, front, to the bow or the stern of the kayak. So that is all it's connected to. So you've got your line which runs through, really, really simple, runs through two bits here and then back around there. And then that's just tied onto that. Now I haven't put the seat here, but my seat's here. So what would be what would happen is I've got my anchor reel in the kayak. Okay, I'm holding that. What I'll be what I, what this is how I anchor. I will put my line my, my anchor line through the clip like hang on I'm gonna do this like so so it's like so it's like that all right so it's like this so I've got I'm holding my anchor line and that is is like that now if I drop that all which is going to happen is going to fall out my hand and it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna come and attach on me you're not going to lose it it's gonna be a bit of a pain in the ass but you're not you're not going to lose it so you're at sea you want to anchor up drop your anchor down the side like so there are much better videos on youtube than what i'm about to show you but as i said this is a run through of everything it's all in one place so i'm gonna to have to show you um shove this scuff to your you're holding that line push that to the back obviously that goes you need to be releasing line as as it goes down you need to push this button this little clip here on that that will release loads of line you see as you can see like that so that's pull the clip up and then loads of line comes out i've got a bit of a tangle on there because obviously it's not but what will happen is you'll end up just move that anchor down there you're moving that to the very back of the kayak okay so you're at sea that's gone I'm just gonna wrap that there that's gone to the very back so your diver's reel here. Okay. There we go. Got some more line out now. So that you're holding, that you're holding up here. You you can I attach it to my crate. It's something I've just created. And that just clips on. Um, and so or I've got I have this thing here which I just clip under. Um, so I just clip my clip clip the diver's reel onto the side of the kayak. I keep this with me at all times. Now some other people will throw this in with a buoy. That's a quick release anchor. It's not something I like to do. Um, there is obviously its benefits of a quick to release anchor, but I love this because if I get in trouble, I can just release loads of line out, or I can or I can cut it if 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 if, if I really had to. So you see, so you're at anchor. You've let out twice the amount, twice to three times the depth of anchor line. Um, and what what you need to be looking at is when the anchor's sitting here. When you look behind you at sea and make sure the line is at that sort of angle. You don't want it, if it's like this, you've not let out enough warp, which is the warp is the, the spare line that you let out on the anchor line. Your line needs to be sitting um, at a sort of, I don't know, what's that? A 100 degree angle, that's 90, isn't it? So yeah, about 100 degree angle. So it needs to be kicking away from you like that. Um, then on retrieval, it's quite quite it's quite simple but can be quite dangerous um you want to put this clip 
to the very front of the kayak. Now this is what I do. So you, what you should have is a, is a cleat. And now that locks this line in place um, so that it can't, so the carabiner at the back can't move forward. It stays in position. I don't have that. I just clip it up here and, it, and it's doubly fine. But on most kayaks, um, and not, not one of these, you want something which is a cleat and it's like a zigzag bit of plastic and you just zigzag the line in like that and it just stops it from moving up and down. So what you want to do, so we've we've had a good day's fishing and now we want to pull our anchor in. I'm just going to try and see this, this anchor's absolutely real, sorry, I'm just letting out some more line. Right. We're at sea now, we want to bring the anchor in. What we're going to do is undo it off the cleat, shuffle it. So we're just shuffling it forward. As you can see, really easy. Just get rid of all that. Obviously, we're holding our diver's reel at this point, and we're going to shuffle that right to the front, all right? So all the way to the front, like so, okay? So the anchor is now going to be that way, um, and you're going to be, you're going to swing around the other way. And then all we're going to do is obviously we're holding our, we've got our diver's reel, we're sitting in our seat, we've got our diver's reel. All we're going to do is pull pull this from the front. So obviously when it's at, when that clip, so when that carabiner's at, the, at the, that like that, as far as it can go, as you can see, it's to the very front. See that clip there? You then need to lock um, this bit of line in place. Obviously on this one, all I have to do is that, but that bit of line you're going to you're going to cleat up now again so that that carabiner is locked there are lots of other videos out here there are better videos but as i said i'm doing an overview um and what you can do now is just pull pull on this line pull it pull it and just keep pulling it in um if you've got a, a paddle kayak you can as you're pulling the line throw it over the side it won't get in a tangle the tide will untangle it keep going keep going keep going until the chain hits that then you undo your cleat, pull that off, and then you bring your carabiner to the side of you. Obviously, by this time you will have had you will have had your, your chain. Your chain would be your chain would be here, and you just pull the anchor in. So really, really quite simple. As I say, it would it would be here, and then you just pull pull it in, and then off you go. So anchoring is quite a simple task, but not so not as simple uh, as some people make it out to be pretty simple done safely it's a fantastic bit of kit so hopefully that's covered a bit of anchoring so moving on to the next part of this video we're going to talk about fish finders um and what i'm just going to talk about at the moment is what you need whether they're worth it and that sort of bit that sort of bits and bobs now a fish finder is a fantastic bit of kit because what it will do is it will tell you the depth of the water the temperature of the water and it'll also show you what the bottom's like so whether it's sand rock um yeah it shows you all the structure the reefs some will have chart plotters on there so you can gps you know where you, where you can add a spot where you've caught lots of fish before you can add it on there chart plot it um yeah great bit of kit actually and i, and I, and I think they are crucial in in their own way because i you have to know the depth of the water for your anchoring it gives you you know if you're sitting over 100 foot of water and you've only got 120 foot on your dive reel you're not going to be able to anchor you know not going to, be able to do it safely anyway um so yeah I, I do think they're a crucial bit of kit and uh, since i've got one um my success rate has gone up so yeah they are worth it obviously you can also find fish but you can't find bottom dwelling fish like smooth hounds plays dabs you're not going to see all of that but what you will see are shoals of mackerel bait fish bass um you know herring scad all, all the shoal fish you will see on that and you'll see them come through and if you're at anchor and you see a shoal come through bang some sabikis down there and you know and you'll catch a few mackerel whereas if you didn't have one you may not um, have realized so what i've got this is a garmin striker 5cv 5.1 inch i think it's 5.1 5.2 inch screen um nice big screen not massive but big enough for me um costs 280 quid um, that doesn't come with any of the mounts or anything. Um, you can get a Garmin Strikers 4, I think it's for about 120 quid. So a nice, nice cheap bit of kit, really quite simple. 
the um, Lawrence Hook 4s and 5, another good fish finder. I haven't used them, but I've heard good things, but just maybe slightly more confusing uh, Lawrence fish finders than the Garmin's. These are really, really simple. So um, so I can't turn it on, it's not connected to a battery, but they're nice, simple bits of kit. Um, to mount that onto a kayak, all you'll need is a bull mount. Um, this, this is the one I've got. I've got one on the kayak. I'll go and show you in a little bit. That's just a ram, ram one inch bull mount. Um, you'll also need a battery, 12 volt. This is a seven amp one. So you need a 12 volt battery. And then what you'll also need then is a charger. So this is just a uh, 12 volt uh, trickle charger. So it slowly charges it, you know, just something like that. That only costs about 20 pounds and that's to charge the battery. So what I'm just gonna do to you now is take you out to my kayak and just show you how how I do the fish finder and how I've set it up. Okay, so moving on to the um, fish finder then, really, really easy to mount. So all you need to do is get one of those ball mounts um, and attach it to the bottom of your fish finder and then also attach the mount that I showed you in, in my shed there um, to your kayak. Just use some stainless steel. Um, those are M, I think they're M4 bolts put through there. I think they're M4. Um, stainless steel marine grade and tighten them up and, and there you go so what i've done here is i've just got the the fish finder set up for you um it's as i say it's so it's so simple um you can see there you've got you've got all your options clear view which is the thing i use and then you can use traditional sonar quick view maps things there let me just see then i might better put it on customs uh system simulator mode here we go all right simulator on so some features of simulate okay right so simulator mode is now on from what i can see let me just double make sure because you can damage the transducer believe it or not yep it's on right so on one of these um that is what you'll see that's clear view um it will tell you your battery there so that's 12.6 volts it's producing it will tell you your depth of water, your temperature, um, and it'll also show you your heading as well at some points. So you'll get this, this here, as you can see, would be a really rocky bottom. Um, it'd be a bottom of a lot of substance. You can see there a little shoal of, shoal of something there. It might be a bit of weed. Um, and it tells you your depths up the side there. So great bit of kit to have, um, but yeah. So that's that. That's a fish one. We'll leave that doing its, well, we won't actually. We'll, we'll leave it on that. Um, on the Hobies, we're quite lucky because we have have it all set up. So your two wires go through there, they go underneath. And then, as I say, in the front compartment, I've got a box which I've made. There's lots of videos out there. That's just a cheap, cheapo waterproof box, a bit of foam, which I've attached the battery to. And obviously that goes on top like that. And then I tie it onto to a little system there, but I do need to get a better base for it to stop it from moving. And I've put a couple of pillows in there, to be honest, um, just to stop it from moving about, but you don't want your battery to move about. So that is the fish finder. I would say they're very worth getting. They're not that expensive, but they're, let's say they're really easy to set up. Um, yeah, so that's the fish finder. Now, you're probably wondering why you're looking at the bottom of my kayak. The reason is, is the fish finder transducer now that is the bit which sends out the sonar and then it's obviously connected to your fish finder it sends back all the information now luckily on the hobies it's all built in so the transducer is under there um a lot of other kayaks don't have that um so what you can do is you can you can attach the transducer inside the hull so a lot of people just sil silicone them on or, or something anything like that um yeah, so you can silicone your transducer, you know, towards the front, and you just silicone it to the bottom, and then you can run up the wires, just like, just like I have. Just run up the wires, and then pull them, pull them through where you need them to go, and then they're just out. Um, look after those, clean them after every session, um, otherwise you will have problems with them in the future. Um, so yeah, that is. I have to lock that down, but it doesn't go. Um, so that is that's fish finders covered. So hopefully that's given you a really good insight into fish finders. So, uh, as promised, this is a complete overview to beginners kayak fishing. We're now just going to run through my rods and reels. Not all of them. God, that'll take us. Uh, well, how long have you got? 
Christmas and in four months, we could probably just about get through it. Um, yeah, this is just going to go through rods and reels, what, what, what I take out. It's really quite simple, really. Um, I always used to use a big fix spool. Um, that's 80 pound braid on. But that would be the sort of thing I would use for smooth hound, rays, pretty much everything, really, um, on a sort of big, big boat rod. Um, not a boat rod, but something which I could use that with. Um, that's what I would used to use. Still sometimes use it, but not so often. What I've got to really start to enjoy is um, multipliers and boat, boat reels. Now, these, this is a, this is just a normal multiplier I'd use for the beach. Um, however, I use this on my kayak now with a boat rod and it works absolutely fine. Um, now that's Nabu Garcia Ambassador. Uh, Rocket Series 6500S. Lovely, lovely reel. Um, the, these are really good because if you're in really deep water, obviously, you just click that button there, put your finger on the spool, and it, and it's gonna, it's dropping down to the bottom so, so quickly, and you just reel and it clip, flips up. So I'm not going to go into much detail, but a couple of those, uh, a couple of multipliers, some the little bait, bait caster reels you can get as well, a couple of those is what you want really um this is a much bigger boat uh, reel um that i'm going to be using for taupe this year hopefully um but i'm going to use that for much bigger fish um so yeah taupe may probably if i'm just going to smooth hound as well bigger smooth hound i will use that opposed to that i want i want something a bit bigger a bit meaner but that's going to be my taupe one you don't need anything overkill um and rod wise on a kayak um you you, you really want but between seven to eight foot, you don't want anything longer or anything shorter. Um, seven to eight foot is absolutely perfect. So this is just a pen multiplier I've got. Um, I use this for, it's quite a big multiplier, but I use it for place and just any old fishing really. And that's just attached to a, um, a seven foot boat rod. Really simple. Um, reason why there's pipe lagging on all of my kayak rods is um, if my rod goes in, I don't like too many leashes and stuff. Um, if my rod goes in, that should should keep it afloat, um, or at least afloat for a little bit longer so I can grab it. Um, if I lose it, I lose it. Unfortunately, that's, that's life, isn't it? But that's why that's on there. Um, so yeah, when I go out, I'll take two, two, two bait rods with me. So I'll also take a boat rod. Um, I've done videos of my um, gear before. If you go to one of my videos called Rods, uh, no, Tackle and Rods Haul, um i found off mark facebook marketplace so it's about an hour's video you can flick through and um the, all my boat rods and what i use are all under that video so i'm not going to go into too much detail but yeah a couple of a couple of seven to eight foot boat rods paired with a multiplier makes for good good bait fishing rods um that use multipliers obviously you, you could pair that with a fixable um also you want to take out a couple of lure rods um, this is a Rovex Revenge. This is a seven foot exactly lure rod. Can't remember the casting weight. Um, nice light lure rod. I've got one which is even lighter than this. Um, and it makes a fantastic sport on the bass and the mackerel. Um, and I want to pair that with just a sort of size 4,000 really. I think that's a 6,000 size reel. Uh, oh no, no, it's not. No, that's a 3,000 size reel. I'm mixing it up with another one. Um, yeah, 20 pound line. You can probably get down to about 12 pound line. Um, take a couple of those out and have them all ready to go. Um, yeah, so again, seven to eight foot. Tackle wise, again, not going into it a lot. I'm just going to show you roughly what I take out. This box goes into my middle of my legs and goes underneath into the inside the kayak should we say um what i have in there is a priest if i want to take anything uh mackerel i'll just snap back the neck but a uh, priest yeah salty a priest uh, i have a load of weights in my, my hobie uh, in, in my kayaks side storage but a couple of weights mackerel feathers crucial sabikis as well they all go in there um rigs we'll talk about that in a second i'll always carry my lure box but these free lures are the ones which do me the business uh there's a little minnow there which i stick a jig head on there's a dive lure that dives to about nine foot fantastic for bass put one of them in there as well another lure that's done me more 
bit business than the one I've just showed you. Slightly smaller, uh, great lure that one. It rattles, I've got a lot of bass on that. You can look back at my old, vid old previous videos and you'll see, catch a lot of fish on those. Also carry a very small box, just full of little bits of end tackle, which I might need. <coughs> oh, sorry about that, uh, bloody sneezing. Um, so I'll carry my running ledger clips, always carry a few of those, some swivels, some link clips, some more of those, just, just some hooks, bits and bobs. Um, do not be making rigs at sea, you shouldn't be doing that. It's faffy and it's just, you don't need to be doing it. Carry them with you, make them before and take them with you. Obviously that is just there in, for emergencies and obviously the, the, lead, the lead clips I use as well. Um, so, rig wise, I don't know what that was. That was a, I don't know what to say, kind of wobble. Um, rig wise, all I use is a panel. That is all that is, is a link clip and a hook. Um, all labeled up. Just take a couple of those out. Say so three, four, five of those. Obviously, if some of these are a bit tangled, they shouldn't be, but they are. Uh, I don't even know why they're, oh, they're tangled because I've got feathers. I've had some feathers attached. They're gonna cause me a pain in the bum. I'll sort them out later. Um, also, this this is my smooth iron rig, single panel, 60 pound body, 4 hook. That's all coming off the spool. I need to put that back because that's doing me bad OCD. Um, two hook panel there, 60 pound, 4 hook. I always write what's on them. Um, and that that is that is really all you need, guys. Um, obviously, if you're place fishing, you can go for wishbone rigs. You can go for the not not clip down obviously because you're using run, running ledger but you can put a load of bead on and put a, a big bar across um and you can sort of do that like that so when you go out on the kayak all you, all you want to take is as much minimal kit as possible so do your lures sorry i'm doing this while i'm doing the video because uh, that's how ocd i am um make make loads of rigs first don't be um making them at sea, make a load of rigs and take them out with you so they're ready to go. Um, and obviously take the rigs you need for what fish you're targeting. So as an overview, you want a couple of bait rods at seven to eight foot. They can be boat rods, they don't have to be, but you know, something something along them lines. Um, you want a couple of multipliers, can be a boat multiplier like that, or even a beach multiplier, doesn't really matter. And a couple of lure rods with sort of two, 3,000 size reels with 20 pounds clear line so you can quickly snap those lures on so that is the tackle that i take out onto my trip as on my notes i've got baits to cover as well i'm just going to quickly go through it um i keep a freezer in my shed really important um this keeps it away from the other half so it keeps her happy or him doesn't matter um and uh it just means that i've got my area i can do what i like um so in here always keep squid on me box of squid the hardback crabs, I've got mackerel, blueies, and I've got loads of my my lugworm there, which I dig, there's probably about 90 in there. And then this, this is gross, but this bottle, I put all my tails in um, and half lugworms, and I take that out every time, I freeze it, take it out, freeze it, take it out. And really it's just top to top the hooks up, nothing special, but I'll pop that in there. Um, so that's my bait fridge. If I'm going out on a typical trip for a mixed species day, um, normally lugworm, squid, mackerel and a couple of crab is usually all you'll need. Um, there's, a, there's a peeler in there. This here is disgusting. These are a load of fish guts. Um, if you're going out at anchor all day long uh, and you know you're sort of going to stay in the same area or you think you are, take, um, take all your fish guts out with you, put them in a box with a load of drilled holes in it or a bag and use it as um, chum. So that's what I keep that in there for. So. That's my freezer and that's the baits I like to keep in stock. Right, kayak storage, really important. Um, this I've made, now I've done a video of how to make one of these and I've ran through what I keep in the box and stuff. So I'm not gonna go too into detail, but um, kayak storage box, you want, obviously this was where my seat is usually at. And then behind me is where I wanna keep all my gear. So um, I've got this, which goes under my seat. In there, I keep all my bait lug worms and that goes under my seat so you want something which you can use to put your bait in um, and on top i have my, have my drink for the day my anchor 
and a few other bits normally that sits sits down the side uh, and then inside we've got my lure box my there's more fishing tackle in there more of my rigs um, that's got my paracetamol and my waterproof case um, it's also got my rod holders we're going to go through those in a minute as well um, it's got my anchor, it's got my anchor, and then it's got this as a little box full of just random bits, um, emergency equipment box really. Take that out because um, you never know what you're going to need. So cable ties, rope, and some carabiner clips. The cable ties are like I've never used as many ever until I got into kayak fishing. They're really useful bit of kit. So um, well, on your kayak, obviously when you buy it, you're not going to have rod holders on it. Well, you probably won't. You want to install some rod holders now. Uh, Lots of different types of rod holders, I'm not going to go through all of those, but these are the ones I've got, really quite simple, and they just slide in. Uh, I'm just going to try and find the, yeah, there it is. They just slide in like that, and then you just put them, put them at whatever angle you require them for. It's not very easy to do like that, but as you can see, you kind of get the idea. You can fit them at any angle you fancy. Um, I've got four on this one. Um, two behind me and then two at the front. I usually add, obviously the wires ain't in there normally. Normally got one going out of the side like that and then one one there. Again, just use stainless steel bolts to pop them in. When you're trolling, you can have them like that. Just, yeah, you, you get what I mean. Nice and, really nice and easy. Um, as I said in here, what I make sure I take out in this is I've got my, my pliers, which admittedly are very rusty and I think actually, Ah, yeah, they, they, they've had it now. I need to get a new pair of uh, stainless steel ones. Not very good. Um, so it's one of those. Got a knife in there. Bait elastic, and as I said, a load of weights as well. It's just so something stuff I can never really forget. Um, I need to keep those out. <laughs> they need to be changed. Um, so yeah, that's the storage parts of the video. It just goes goes into the back, and it so I don't lose it. It all gets clipped up. One gets clipped up to there, goes around there, and same again there and there. My rods will just go in these holders that I've created. If you want to know how to make this, it costs about three or four quid, I suppose. Five quid if you have to buy the boxes. A uh, bit of PVC piping for your to your rods, cable tied on. That's that. Put my net in. So that, again, you need you really need that if you're going to go out kayak fishing and you want to have a nice neat bit of kit. So moving on then to sort of more of the last part of the video, um, this is where I store my kite. Now a lot of people will have this problem. Um, if you're lucky like me and have a lot of room by the side of your house, um, you can you can build something like what I've done here. Um, this probably cost me around the 40 quid mark to build. Um, I've got my green one down there, a block base, and then obviously the other side exactly the same. I've just got some underground drain pipes running there for the scupper holes on the Hobie, which I want to protect. A bit of felt on top, and then it's got a bit of chipboard along the side. I still need to fix it slightly. There's been a lot of wind recently. Um, I'm going to paint that grey as well. So obviously the, the kayak slides on there. It all gets chained up. I've got a very, very loud dog which lives in there. He will let me know if there's anyone uh, around the area or um, if they're having a little look at it ready in my gear he'll let me know and I work shifts so I'm constantly in and out of the house um, and then up there we've got our um, lobster net and, <laughs> and ball pot um, so yes yeah, so now we're going to look at how we get that thing onto my car now I was very lucky this isn't my invention at all um, this is a friend of mine's invention and he sort of built this for me actually um, with a tiny bit of help for myself but barely any um, so all this is is flag flag poles drilled into my crossbar um, on the car and then you run two wheels at the back of it and he's done a video uh, carper blue car carper blue i think his youtube is i'll um i'll try and put it in the caption when i edit it um and he's got he's done a video of how to get it on but you sort of you, you pick the kayak up you drop it on to there then you just slide it on and then strap it up so yeah, good setup for it. Okay, so when we're looking for and planning our trip, we go on to either xcweather or windy.com. So this is xcweather, and we're just going to type in where we want to go and click the go button. 
that will bring up some columns um, on the very left hand side um, you've got all your times and it on, on well, as the day you're going it'll be on hourly and it'll turn to free hourly right hand side you've got the wind direction then you've got the main wind and then whatever it's gusting up to then you've got temperature the rain and then a little sexy symbol as to what the weather should be so today is sunny and it is um, as you scroll down it i think it gives you a five day rough forecast um, as you see none of these days are any good um, until we hit saturday which is lovely because we've got nice northerly winds there that will flatten off the sea nice and a nice six miles an hour to eight mile an hour so that is great so saturday looks really good 11th of july nice sunny as well sunday's even better because it's that lighter blue uh, blue color is, is pretty much always good um, it can gust to green on a northerly um, but anything after that is no go so that's xc weather you want to go to for that one then we go on to windy.com uh, and then if you zoom in to whatever area you want to go to you can get a little bit more detail on the wind and swell um, and a bit more sort of thing so zoom in as far as you want to go um, you get these little arrows coming over the screen so the closer they are the windier it is click the area which you wish to check and then from there you can look down below um, as you can see, if you go onto the click basic and then click wind, um, which will coming up very shortly. Uh, there we go. Um, now what you can do is you can see, sorry about that, you can see the swell. Now you want this to be under about 0.5 um, m, which is 0.5 meters from what everyone's told me. Um, and I've been out now a few times looking at this and they're right. 0.5 run that does tend to be correct. Um, you can have a bit of a play there. You've got the wind direction on there, the gusts and the local webcams as well. And you can flick through there and look what the sea's been like so you can see whether it's worth going or not. Um, so, yeah, that is that. So that's windy.com and XC Weather. Um, also, what another thing you can do, you can type in um, Eastbourne webcam or Bexhill webcam. A lot of places have webcam. You can hit the play button and that gives you a live recording of what the sea is doing at that present time great bit of kit that definitely definitely worth looking at so you can see where the waves at the moment not great we wouldn't be going out in that thank you very much okay so we've spoken pretty much um about everything which you need to know hopefully um if you're thinking about kayaking at sea and, and going fishing um, at sea what I can say is it's a fantastic sport. Um, I cannot recommend it enough. Um, I'm an avid fisherman, always have been. I got into carp angling, as you can see behind me. I'm sitting on a carp chair, got my carp bed there. I've got all my carp stuff as well. Um, so that's how I got into fishing, uh, through carp fishing. And then I got into catfish and then a bit of course fishing the river. Um, and then I moved down to Eastbourne from Croydon, um, started to do more sea fishing. I'd always, always, always done sea fishing, but I've, I've never done a lot of it. Um, obviously moving to Eastbourne I started doing a lot of it I started getting really into it and then um, I saw this that green kayak I showed you at the very start of the video that came up for about 150 quid and I bought it um, really just for a bit of fun really just to mess around in inshore not not really fishing from just messing around maybe doing a bit of mackerel fishing in the summer um, and I joined uh, Sussex Kayak Fishing Group which is the group I'm in um, on Facebook and I didn't realise how serious you can, get, you can go with it, you know. Um, and I went out with them one day at um, Shoreham, and uh, we, we'd just got out the harbour. It was really rough. And um, they, in my first time in that green kite, I said, yeah, not not good to go out. So we turned around and we went down the River Ada and tried to flounder. We, we, I didn't get anything apart from crabs, but I enjoyed it so much. Within, I think, two to three weeks, I'd, I'd bought that Hobie, um, which is a big investment. <laughs> but it's been totally worth it you know if you look back at my previous videos you can see some of the trips that i've been on you know i've caught smooth hound i've caught bass mackerel place dabs um a lot of a lot of stuff no rays yet but i haven't really had um i haven't had a red left day at anchor yet um i'm sure i will well i know i will um but we've i've only been out probably about nine ten times something like that um, and most of the time it's just been trolling for bass um, near where I live and I've had some really good success on that. Um, so all I can say is it's a fantastic sport to get into. If you're into your sea fishing, 
you're comfortable on the water. Um, I'm not an amazing swimmer at all. I don't like going under. I don't like the thought of deep water, but I've got a dry suit. I've got a uh, PLB, my personal flotation device, PL, PLD, sorry. Yeah, God, I'm going mad today. I've been up since half 3 a.m., that's why. Um, so I've got all that. So if I fall in it, it doesn't, it's not going to be the end of the world, you know. One thing you want to practice is, is your self recovery. So just go in, just sort of go in on a beach and just try and get back on the kayak if you've fallen out. That's something I must admit I haven't done yet. I haven't really had the opportunity to do it, um, but I, I do need to do it um, to make sure I can get back on. I I will be fine. I've got a lot of upper body strength and um, my legs can. I'm quite comfortable about getting back in. I know I'll be fine. Um, bit of wind out there. Um, so that's something you want to try. But um, yeah fantastic sport you can get out a long way you can anchor up you can get out to a whole new world of sea fishing and um, you, you won't regret it um, second hand kayaks keep their value so if you buy one and you decide you know you've been out three or four times and you think oh do you know what it's not really for me the effort's too much um, you can sell it and, and get what you paid for it normally um, so yeah I, I hope this video has covered everything we've covered what kayaks you need to be looking for we've covered about all the safety gear that you need to purchase we talked about anchoring and anchor trolleys, rods and reels and, and basic terminal tackle uh, and end tackle while using the kayak. We spoke about the fish finders, um, how we put it on the car, where we store our kayak um, and radios and all that. All, you know, we, we've pretty much covered, if you've watched this video from start to finish, most bikes. God, trying to make a video here. Yeah, it's here. Um, yeah, we've pretty much covered everything you need to know about sea fishing. We've covered it before we've spoken about um, planning, um, about we weather trips and stuff like that. What I will say is for your first time, God, go out with people, don't go out on your own. It took me seven goes on with, with a lot of, with a group of people before I started going on my own. And even now I'll only go on my own if it's really calm. Um, and I will only go out about a mile, um, but I feel really safe doing that. I've done that a few times and it's, I've really enjoyed it actually, but yeah group of people for safety when you first go out is an absolute must um facebook groups use them to your heart's delight everyone's so friendly kayak fishing they'll tell you lots of things and you can learn lots and ask lots of questions um so yeah i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you know how to plan a trip going kayak fishing thanks for watching subscribe don't subscribe but it's great if you do leave a comment and um go and check out my other videos uh, and some of the adventures that i've had um my next video hopefully is going to be a trip out um, and then i'm going to do a video about my setting up of the kayak and how to how i set it up and exactly how i set it up i'll probably do that um when i went out before a trip sometime but yeah hopefully in about five six days time i aim to do about one of one video a week I go fishing about once a week um my next video should either be uh well it'll either be carp fishing because i'm gonna go friday or um Saturday, hopefully the weather stays the same, I will be out uh, either at Bexhill or Eastbourne um, and we'll be going for bass, mackerel and, and, and some smooth out as well. So thank you very much for watching again. Any questions, throw them my way and I'll help answer them for you. But hopefully let's uh, you'll get on board with the experience and you'll enjoy it just as much as I have. Thank you very much and take care.